How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to On The Ball and welcome back to another Premier League special. We're going to be looking at each and every individual team and we're going to be picking their player of the season this year. We're going to go in alphabetical order. So we've got 20 players to pick and we're going to start off with Arsenal. A few standout performers for Arsenal this year. Who is your pick? I've gone for Declan Rice. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, there are a few standouts in terms of their consistency throughout the season. I mean, the obvious, you go to Bakayo Saka, but I don't think he's actually had the most consistent season. Um, first half of the season, I don't think he performed that well. Um, and second half of the season, he really has come alive. Declan Rice, I do think, is the pick. But then you've got to give honourable mentions to players like Gabriel as well, who I think has been brilliant at the back for them, definitely contributed to the best defence in the season this year. You've got to look at Saliba as well. Um, but yeah, I, I probably would agree with you with Declan Rice. He's just taken, I feel, feel like he's taken their midfield up a notch mm. the way he's played. And I think as well, you look at the goal contributions he's got, yeah. I think it's like uh, something like six goals and six assists or something like that, for, mostly playing in the number six position. He's got the ability to play the number eight as well. Um, and he's just so consistent in either position. And he's shown to play in such a high um, uh, quality. I don't, has he missed a game? I think he's played every game, hasn't he, Rice? I think, um, I think, I think he... Um, I don't remember. Because he got injured in the North London derby early in the season. I'm not sure if he missed the next game after that. Maybe he missed a game or one game. But like yeah. he's been always available. Um, I just couldn't look past him. It's seven goals, eight assists. That's it, seven goals. So, I mean, you can't... Plus, he's been playing in the six for a lot of that as well. So, And his set pieces, everyone yeah. is on the money. Yeah, I think Rice has been one of the players of the season, so... Had to give it to him. And when you talk about like hundred million pound players um, over the past like four or five years, you've got players that have signed to close to hundred million, like in the in the ballpark here of like eighty to hundred million, right? No one has worked out as well as Declan Rice in terms mm. of big money signings like that. Yeah, it's been a phenomenal signing. Next up, Aston Villa. Um, I mean, there's an easier option there, Ollie Watkins, who's been brilliant this year. For me, he's my pick for player of the season in, in general. I think when you look at the number of goals he's scored, the number of assists he's got, it's so hard to look against him as well. Villa can nearly solidifying that place in the top four as well. So you've got um, Unai Emre has done a brilliant job and he's really taken Ollie Watkins' game to the next level. And they're so reliant on him as well. Like, that a lot of the how Villa play is based around Ollie Watkins getting the ball to him very quickly, his hold up play, and how um, amazing he's been not just with his finishing ability and his ability to sniff out goals um, uh, from striking positions, but his ability to bring others play other players into play, make players around him better, is uh, quite incredible. And he's had an incredible season. He's going to be desperately unlucky not to be starting at the Euros for England. The way he's played is only. Uh, only because he's got Harry Kane in front of him. He won't be because he's been the best striker probably in the Premier League this season. And he's just such a great all-rounder. Uh, even if he has a game, he can go through a period where he doesn't score for three games, yet he's probably laid on four or five assists in that time. Mm. That's how effective he's been. Um, obviously, other shout-outs for him for Douglas Louise, who had an unbelievable especially first after the season, and is uh, and Leon Bailey, who's had an astonishing uh, comeback season for him after a couple of quite average seasons for Aston Villa. So two really good shouts for but has to go to Watkins, I think. Yeah, Watkins' numbers read at 19 goals, 12 assists. That is just monstrous numbers. Uh, but Leon Bailey, 10 goals, 9 assists, nearly mm. 20 goal contributions this season for Aston Villa. And like... Yeah, people have been giving him credit all season, but in terms of those numbers, that is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, he's been phenomenal. Uh, we always knew he was a good player at Leverkusen, but since coming to the Premier League, he's kind of shown his inconsistent side to his game, which we all knew, kind of knew he had. But this season, he's taken it up a notch. We know how much ability he has. And he's been a delight to watch this season. He's been so much fun as well. And some of the goals he scored, brilliant uh, finishes from outside the box. He's got so much ability. And he's added a bit more consistency to his game. And that's what, where those numbers have come from. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, Villa have had a great season. But Ollie Watkins definitely leads the charge there for their player of the season. Bournemouth. Look, there's only one man to go for Bournemouth, isn't there? Uh, yeah, well, Big Dom. Yeah. Big Dom Solanke. Uh, had to go for him. I think over six... I uh, know what, 18 Premier League goals now. This 18 season. goals, three assists. That's incredible. Um, last season, there were kind of like... Um, there's, there was a bit of evidence. You know, he was maybe going to start scoring a few more goals. He had a really good second half of the season. But this season, he's really taken up, up a notch under Ira Ola. Um, another English striker 
who's such a physical presence. I've been so impressed with how he bullies really strong defenders. I was watching against Arsenal. I know they lost um, uh, 3-0, but there were just some moments where the ball comes to him and he's just shoving people like Saliba out of the way and he's, he's taking it under control. And like he's really coming to his own now. The, the slank you got to remember was a striker, a bit of a journeyman. Went to Chelsea, Liverpool, mm. was a few uh, a few other clubs as well. Couldn't really find a home. It was and there was a big, um, it was a striker at a young age had a lot of potential. But then there was getting to a stage where people were doubting whether he was ever going to be a Premier League striker. But now he's fully realised that potential, and he's a real goal scorer and another player similar to Watkins, maybe not Watkins' level, but can also lay on assists as well, brings other players into play. Such a handful um, when, he, when he's up against you. And he's been phenomenal for Bournemouth this season. What do you think the best course of action is now for Dominic Solanke after a season like this? For him personally, do you think he stays at Bournemouth or do you think that he, can, he should be going to a club maybe with higher ambitions? It's difficult. I don't think he should be any rush to leave because I think he's got a good thing going at Bournemouth and clearly they believe in him. He's the main man. But if he has ambitions of you know going to international tournaments, he'll probably miss out this summer um, because just because of who he's playing for, really. Let's be honest. And I think well, the, you yeah. say it's because of who he's playing for, but Watkins and Harry Kane have been a lot better than him. Yeah, but you know, if he was playing for a top six team, maybe they they take three strikers. You know what I mean? So, I, yeah, you're right. It's not just because of that, but. I feel like if he wants to really put himself in those conversations, even if he's playing for a top team in, in you know challenging for Europe and, and big things, then I think it's he'll be a lot harder to ignore. And um, I think if he's got ambition, I wouldn't say push for a move, but like I, I think if a move comes along, I think for a bigger club he should take it. Mm. Um, other players that have played for Bournemouth this season who have impressed me. One of them is um, the defender Marco Sensei. Mm, I think it's an Essie, Yeah, I think he's um, gone under the radar this year. Four goals, four assists from the centre back mm. role. Um, ball playing ability as well. I, I think he's looked like um, a really smart kind of player for Bournemouth this season. Yeah, I like him a lot. Sanessi, good ball, confident on the on the ball. He's uh, got, got good ability. I think he's been built quite a decent partnership with Zabriani as well. I think Zabriani has played most games for Bournemouth as well. Good young centre back, strong in the air. But one other shout out is uh, Semenya up front. I think he's had a pretty decent season with them. Um, I think eight goals, four assists uh, coming from the wing. He's got he's shown an ability uh, to take people on. Good finishing ability as well. So I think he also has had a pretty decent season. Mm. Let's go to Brentford. Not the best season for Brentford. Uh, they were kind of flirting with relegation for quite a while. And I think with the way that they've actually played the game, probably don't deserve to be down there. I just think they've been maybe Ivan tony uh, for majority of the season and have been missing that proper goal threat. They have, and also Brian and Buemo has been out for a large part of the season as well. So that really has diminished their kind of goal threat. Uh, Johan Wisser and Neil Morpai have kind of picked up the mantle in that time, but you're not going to get as many goals as from them as when you've got Ivan Tony and Mbwemo in the mix. So who are you looking at for player of the season for Brentford? I think Mbwemo, when he's played, when he's been available and played, probably been their best player, but I did go for Wisser just because he's been available for m majority of the season. And even when Mbwemo and Tony, you've got to remember there was a period where Mbwemo and Tony were out, and he really stepped up in that period. And didn't obviously he wasn't bagging tons of goals, but he was Brentford was still a threat going forward because of Wisser. And he's such a big, important player. Um, he's got bags of pace. He's, he's, a, he's a real handful. And even when he misses chances, he's still a threat uh, in behind uh, Wisser. And I think in the end, he's going to finish the season with about you know, over 10 goals. And I think he's really stepped up for Brentford this season on a consistent basis. And, he could, and also, you play, they play him on the wing. They play him up front. And he's still a threat in either position as well. And he's going to be a big reason why they stay up. So I've gone for Wisser. Yeah, I completely agree with that in terms of the amount of games he's played 32 to Brian and Buemo's 23. In Buemo's numbers, though, eight goals, five assists in nine less games. And Johan Wiss has got 10 goals and one assist. So mm. it shows the qualities of Brian and Buemo. But I agree with you because Johan Wisser has done it for the majority of the season. I'm going to go for him. I want to give a shout out to Sergio Regulon, though, because since going there in January, I really think he's been brilliant for them. Four assists. He's been central to that left side, filling in for Rico Henry since he's been out for the whole season. And he's added a different element to that uh, Bournemouth defence, hasn't he? Yeah, and I feel like they've really missed Rico Henry badly because he's such a big player for them. So finally having a left back like Regulon who can get forward like they need on the outside, provide that width, has been very important and he's been a really good loan signing for them. 
Mm. Next one's going to be difficult. It's Brighton. I mean, Brighton have been a strange team this season because I think that we all expected maybe a season of struggle being their first year in Europe. And I think that's what it's been. Um, I think the Brighton fans are probably a bit, a bit disappointed the way their Premier League campaign has gone. But in terms of player of the season for them, who would you go for? I went for Pascal Gross. Mm, yeah, I, went for Pascal I Gross. actually think that's probably an easy, an easy one in terms of because the amount of assists he's got this season is actually super impressive. Yeah, and he's always been consistent. Even when in games, I watch games, you know, on match of the day where they've lost and he's still creating those chances. They're just missing them a lot of the time. He's such a threat from set pieces and he's such a consistent performer all the time, Pascal Gross. He's so underrated um, because he doesn't have like great physical attributes, which obviously are very much valued in the Premier League. He gets overlooked, but he's always there um, in those positions, setting up chances. Also, they play him in so many different positions, sometimes on the 10, right wing, right back even sometimes. And in any position, um, he does the job deserve, he asked him. And because he's got such high level of technical ability, um, he can always be effective in each of those positions. And um, he's also one of their only good players who's been fit the whole season. The likes of Matoma, Jao Pedro, Ferguson, um, Esther Pinyan, some of their main players have been missing for large swaths of the of the season. And I guess another shout might be Lewis Dunk, who's, who's been pretty decent, but obviously Brighton do concede a lot of goals. So I just went for um, Pascal Gross. With Pascal Gross, with what you're saying about the different positions he's played this season, I always feel like when Brighton play and he doesn't play number 10, they're just that a bit more blunt up going up front and creating those chances and being very clinical in that area of the pitch as opposed to when he plays maybe a more out wide or maybe a right back or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree with you. Pascal Gross has had a spectacular season. Burnley up next. Um, in terms of Burnley, I'll probably say Datro Fofana. In terms Fofana. of Yeah, I mean, he's come in on loan from Chelsea. And what's his numbers at? He's only scored four goals and one assist, but I do feel like whenever he has played in, in when Burnley have been kind of impressive in the second half of the season, he has been very central to that. I went for Sander Berger. Sander Berger. Mm. I think he's actually been a pretty solid signing for them. I think he's actually been quite an important player in that central midfield. Um, He's obviously a midfield, bit of a midfield destroyer, but he's got a that little bit of technical ability as well. And in the recent games where they've been a bit more resolute, he's really stood up for them. And um, we saw he was a good player in the Premier League for Sheffield United a, a few years back. But obviously, um, they got relegated and he was down there in the Championship with them. And I think um, he's a big part of the reason why they stand a fighting chance, at least, of staying up. They obviously probably are going to go down, but I think he's probably been their best player and most consistent performer for me. Um, one player I want to mention who got injured early on in the season who I think would have had a shout by at this time is Koli Osho. And I really like the look of him, dribbling ability, one-on-one, -on -one, um, young player. And I just remember going up to Burnley early stages of the season when we played them and we beat them 5-2. But he was giving us so many problems in the early phases of that game. And I feel like every time I did watch them play before he got that long-term injury, he was giving anyone that he played against like real big problems. And it was a big miss for them, wasn't it? He's one to watch for, for sure. Still 19 and clearly got bags of potential. Such a young, exciting player. Hopefully his injury doesn't hamper him too much. But yeah, I'm looking forward to what the future brings for him. Next up is Chelsea. And I think there's only one player to look at for Chelsea, and that is Cole Palmer. Um, he's he They've relied on him so much um, in terms of his goal numbers. 21 goals, nine assists. Man City are probably thinking uh, we should have got a bit more money, never mind 45 million for him. And they're probably thinking we could have done with him, even though they have, uh, well, they are still in the title race, but maybe they could have, gone back-to-back -back trebles if they had uh, Cole Palmer and Phil Foden in the same team but he has just been incredible absolutely incredible one of the standouts in the Premier League and where would Chelsea be without him this season maybe a relegation battle the way he's been performing astonishing season for him um, such a cool customer as uh, you know Cole Palmer the, the, as they like to call him I think he's been astonishing and I think it's a real lesson in terms of um, players having confidence in their own ability even when you know, how many Premier League appearances did he have even before the season? I think just over 10. Like, overall, most of them weren't even starts. And I think this is kind of lesson where if you see a player with ability, even if they haven't got the experience just yet, um, 
you can sometimes take a gamble on them and it can pay off. And I think that's definitely happened with Cole Palmer because they paid nearly 50 million for him. Mm. And at the time, there was a lot of eyebrows raised. I raised my eyebrows thinking, look, might be a player with good potential, but 50 million for a player with you know just over 10 appearances in the Premier League is quite a, a big fee. Yeah, clearly, Chelsea saw the potential in him and said, look, this could be a big player, even though he hasn't played so much. And also, it's a lesson for young players who are maybe a big club sitting on the bench, being a bit part player and think they, they're more than that and back their inability. And Palmer definitely did that. And he's gone to Chelsea, become the main man within a season. And now he's on the plane probably to the Euros this summer. Mm. So what a season and a great story for him. Yeah, absolutely. Next up is Crystal Palace. I mean, obviously, that you've got Michael Elise and Eberechieze. Are you picking one between them or are you looking at someone else? I'll actually look for someone else. I've gone for Wakim Anderson at centre-back. Mm. I think... Uh, Elise and Eze are obviously still stars in the making. I love them, but they have been in and out of the side a lot this season. I think Eze's only had 23 starts. Elise, uh, probably le- a lot less than that because he's been injured for the majority Elise's of the season. Elise played 22, Eze's 25. Okay. Uh, but in terms of star starting games, I think it's a bit, uh, a bit less. But I th- obviously he's been brilliant. But I think Anderson, even under Roy Hodgson, he was probably one of their standout players. I remember early in the season, I thought he was exceptional uh, in the early parts of the season under Roy Hodgson when even though they were struggling, he was really performing consistently. I, I'm a big fan of his. I think he's got such great uh, technical ability. I think he's really taken to Oli Glasner's way of playing as well because they like to be a bit more direct. They need to get the ball forward a lot quicker. Anderson is so um, brilliant um, at playing those long diagonal balls and it's really helping Glasner's uh, project as well. So I think he does both elements really well. He's such a threat from set pieces. I think um, I think he's played every single game. He hardly ever misses a game. I think he's been exceptional. I barely see him ever have a bad game, Anderson. So I went for him. Yeah, it's definitely a good shout. Do you think like a player like him should be or could be getting a bigger move? Because Spurs have been linked with him a number of times. Yeah, I think so. I think he'll probably want to see where this Glasner project goes because it's a new thing and I think it's exciting. Um, I don't know if if a top six team will come in for him this summer, but I do think he's good enough to play for a top six team. I think he's, I think he's got a really such great ability. I'm looking at Eze and Elise, um, and I was going to pick between them two, and I did just slightly edge it with Michael Elise over Eberechi Eze this season in terms of the numbers he's produced and the minutes that he's been on the pitch. I think in terms of per ninety or something, I think he averages a goal contribution every other game or something like that, or very close to that. So I think that's brilliant in for Michael Elise but one player I wanted to mention is Adam Wharton at the heart of the midfield for Crystal Palace he came in in January right uh, from the championship and he just taken to the Premier League like a duck to water he's so central uh, to what they're doing in the middle of the park now and you know other clubs were in for him Spurs were linked with him and Palace were the one that takes the punt and every single player they seem to take a punt on from the championship seems to swim in the Premier League um, brilliantly. So you've got to give credit to the scouting team. And he's he looks like a really, really good find. And I wouldn't be surprised at all. After a couple of years with Palace, he could get a really big move. Definitely. He's so combative as well. He really doesn't look out of place, but he's such, got, got great ability with his left foot. Um, such a cultured footballer, but with that real street, hard streak as well. Um, top talent. And if anyone needs a lesson of how much talent there is in the championship, you only have to look at Crystal Palace because they sign them for modest fees all the time and they turn them into stars. They've do, been doing it consistently and um, they've done it again, looks like a Wharton. So I think the people should be looking at the championship a lot more seriously. Mm. Moving on to Everton. And obviously they have been saved from relegation uh, after another strong end to the season from them. Um, in terms of player of the season for Everton, I have I couldn't pick between either Jordan Pickford or Jared Branthwaite. I think those two are the, are the standout performers for me. I think I will just go with Jared Branthwaite just because young player, Evertonian, he's really um, you know catching the eye of all the top clubs this season and there's a reason for that, it's because he's been sensational in terms of the way he can bring the ball out the back, how strong he is in defence, he even finds the net on a few occasions as well, really good in the air um, I really like him Yeah and it's been a difficult season for Everton and he's been kind of chucked in at the deep end you know, relegation battle, points deductions and he's really stood up for them at such a young age, really impressive maturity I think he's shown for Everton this season and shown a lot of quality as well he's going to be a future England defender for sure he's got a big, big future ahead of him I went for him for Everton Player of the Year as well Uh, other shout outs for me were 
um, as well. Dwight McNeil, I thought, has had a pretty solid season for Everton. I think the stats are fairly modest, three goals and seven assists, but he's actually actually a really important player for Sean Dyche with his delivery from that left-hand side. Um, it's really, really important uh, when they're putting teams under pressure. He's always got such consistent delivery and he always finds a way of making a yard for himself. I think he's had a pretty good season as well and stepped up in big moments for them. Um, the Corey had a great start, kind of tailed off lately, but he was a really consistent performer early on in the season as well. So he was also a shout out. Next up, Fulham. Um, I've got a couple of players that I've, I've uh, picked out. Ricardo Muniz, uh, Andreas Pereira and um, Anthony Robinson as well. Mm. I think those three players have been the three standouts for them. But if I have to pick one out of the three, probably just Rodrigo Muniz, just because of the surprise factor. He's just come out of nowhere and just started banging out the goals for fun. Yeah, maybe it was, you could call it a purple patch because they were kind of all in a similar stage of the season. But because he's just come out of nowhere, he's never really, no one's really caught the, he's never caught the eye of anyone before. And he's come in and banged the goals in for Fulham at a time of need. Yeah, one player of the month, I think. I think it was for March or April, yeah. one, of them, one of those. Um, really impressive. And you saw how much it meant to him because he was a player who not many not many people knew. And, you know, when you're banging goals and getting the recognition there, it must feel very, very good for him. Um, I think Robertson's probably been their most consistent performer. Um, I did go for Jao Palinia. I do still think, oh, he's, yeah. I still think he's been their best player, even though I don't think he's been quite as good as last season. I still think even a slight drop-off still means he's by far their best player. And I think he's so important in midfield. You see when he's missing how much they miss him as well. Um, I think they really struggle when he's not on the pitch. So I still went for Jao Palinia. Yeah, fair play. Liverpool up next. And I don't think you can look anywhere. Uh, apart from Virgil van Dijk for Liverpool. I think he's been a man mountain at the back. Yeah, he's had a couple of dodgy games like that one against Arsenal. But when you look at his season last year, everyone was saying, oh, Virgil van Dijk's finished. He's this, he's that. But he's come in. He's really stood up for the team, leadership qualities and goals. He he's always seems to be a threat on goal from set pieces as well. I think he's been brilliant this season. Yeah, I think... Really, a return to form for him. I agree. Um, I do think lately, not just him, but uh, but I do I do think lately he hasn't been quite as good as he was for the majority of the season. Although I think he's been phenomenal this season. Obviously, Salah, you look at his goals: eighteen goals, eleven assists. You can't really complain with that. Although, again, when it's come to crunch time, um, he's faltered quite badly, and that's obviously going to skew a lot of people's uh, opinions on his season. When when it came to crunch time, he's. Uh, really let Liverpool down a bit with some of the misses he's had. One player I went for um, is Alexis McAllister, I think, in the centre. I think he's been a phenomenal signing for them. You've got to remember as well, a lot of the season, he's, um, you know, Endo hasn't been there and he's had to play that number six position and he's kept Liverpool competitive while playing in that position, uh, which isn't his favourite position. And I think he did a really great job setting the tone um, making sure it lived one getting overrun and yet when he moved into that number eight position once Endo was fit I thought he started to get those regular goal contributions um, showed how high technical ability he has but he's got such a, a great energy off the ball as well he really gets Liverpool um, up and running I think at the end it's like nine goals four assists for him this season plus all the defensive work he puts in I think it's been a phenomenal first season for McAllister so I went for him interesting Luton um, I mean, Ross Barkley's just been a complete standout performer for them this season. He's kind of a bit of a throwback to maybe what he was like at Everton because his career has gone kind of wayward since leaving Everton. He's come into this Luton side where no one really wanted to give him a chance and uh, he's been brilliant. He's been brilliant throughout the whole season. But I would say Elijah Adebayo as well. I think Adebayo, as well as Barkley, he is one that can say that he can get a move back to the Premier League uh, probably after Luton get relegated this season. Maybe not as one of the leading clubs, but definitely um, one of the clubs maybe in the, in the bottom half of the table. He's a real handful. I think he Luton just looks look so much more of a threat when he's on the pitch than when he's not. Uh, but Barkley has been running things from the middle. But I am going to just slightly side with Elijah Adebayo just because since he's been injured, they've just like they just can't seem to get results. I went with uh, Ross Barkley. I think he's been unbelievably consistent. Even in when Luton are getting battered and losing games, he's still head and shoulders above um, the, his rest of his teammates. I think this is by far his best season of his career, in my opinion, for Ross Barkley. I've never seen him perform at such a consistent level, at such a high ability as well. I've been so impressed um, with how he's performed. And I think 
he's been a bit of a nightmare to play against for opposition players because uh, he just dribbles. He's got such upper body strength. He just dribbles past you. He gets past you, and it's hard to deal with. And he's added a, a bit of quality this season as well. He's bagged um, quite a few goals. Um, so another shout out as well, Alfie Doughty. I think mm. he's had a pretty good season at left back um, or left mid, left wing back, I should say. Got really good delivery. Um, a player who's quite underrated, I feel, Alfie Doughty. So I think he deserves a shout out. But for me, I think Barkley's been head and shoulders their best player. Next up, Manchester City. Who are you going for? Who else? Phil Foden. Phil Foden, yeah. Unbelievable. What a season he's had. I wouldn't call it a breakout season because he's been so good <laughs> for so long, but this is definitely his best season. He does seem to be getting better year on year. And he's really adding that ruthlessness in the final third, which I feel like a lot of the time in previous years, he would look pretty without, um, you know, you know, really going that extra mile where he, he just looks absolutely ruthless. And now he's getting hat tricks. Now he's um, laying things on the plate. He's keeping things simple when they need to be, not overcomplicating things, which I think sometimes he used to be guilty of. And he's got so much talent, so much natural talent in his legs. Unbelievable first touch. Uh, unbelievable ability to wriggle part past people. And now he's starting to bang goals in from 25 yards on a regular basis. I think it's an astonishing season and um, deserves his props. He's going to be my City Player of the Year. 16 goals, 8 assists. And when you talk about breakout season, maybe not a breakout season in terms of what everyone thinks of his talent, but it is a breakout season in terms of solidifying your place in the starting lineup uh, for Manchester City. So, yeah, I completely agree. Phil Foden has been head and shoulders above everyone in that City team. And it's mad because you've got Erling Haaland sitting there on 25 goals, five assists in 28 games. And the narrative around Haaland is like, it's, he's had a poor season. I know, because he got 37 <laughs> last year. So everyone's like, where are the goals gone? Uh, even though he's still going to probably win the Golden Boot in the Premier League. But... Um, you got to remember that period where uh, Harlem was out and they probably even looked better than they did when he was there. And that's a lot down to how good Phil Foden is. Yeah. Manchester United up next. I mean, there's not really been anyone Slim that's picking, been a uh, standout for Man United. I mean, I'd probably just side with Bruno Fernandes. He was the only one who's probably had a decent Kobe season. Kobe Maynou. Yeah, maybe Kobe Maynou. But again, he only really broke out into the team in, what, January time. I guess he's played 20 games. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I, I guess he could be with the shout. He's probably been quite consistent, although I think recently he's also Scott McTominay. <laughs> I know he had a few goals, but I don't know. I don't think he's actually played well. He's Garnacho. had good moments. Garnacho, he's been decent. I think he's kind of been a bit hit hot and cold. I think you probably have to give it to Bruno Fernandes. He's the only one who's had some sort of standards throughout the season. Yeah. He's got 10 goals and 8 assists. Um, even though he himself, he's probably had better seasons. He's probably been the best of a bad bunch when it comes to Man United. I don't think any of the defenders could be in there. Onana's had a weak season. Um, there's no one else, really. Uh, you could probably say he's been consistent as Bruno, so probably have to give it to Bruno. Newcastle up next, and I do think there's a three-horse race for this one. It's Alexander Isak, Anthony Gordon, and Bruno Guimaraes. I think those three players have been brilliant for uh, Newcastle this season. I feel like Bruno Guimaraes has taken up a notch from last season. He's really started to add those goal contributions late on in the season as well. Anthony Gordon, 10 goals, 10 assists. I mean, he's proved a lot of doubters wrong as well. But Alexander Isak, 20 goals this season in 27 games, one assist as well. He's such a handful, isn't he? Um, the way he can run in behind, the quality he has of the shots, the, how hard he is to get the ball off. I think Alexander Izak will win this one. I've gone for Gordon um, just because um, I think he's been so important for Newcastle, even in their times of struggle where they've been uh, struggling throughout the season. He was still providing a goal threat um, for Newcastle. It's actually 10 goals, 16 assists, I think I've got here. Well, I don't know what that's FPL. I don't know if that's what official stats are, but... Um, I think he's so versatile as well. He's filled in up front, he's filled in on the left, he's filled in on the right, and just done a great job for the team. And I think when they look back at the season, a lot, a big reason why they're still in that race for top six is because Gordon has still been uh, has been a threat throughout the whole season for them. And I think this has been a real breakout season for him personally. I think um, there are questions of uh, obviously he's clearly a good player, but he's I think even Newcastle fans would be surprised how 
big and how good he's been this season. He's played 32 games, and when they signed him, you know they probably thought he might be a bit of a rotation player, but he's turned into their best attack, one of them main attackers now and their main winger, and it looks like he's got an unbelievable future ahead of him. So. I'm, I've gone for Anthony Gordon. Yeah, I think those four extra assists are because of the penalties he's won, because he's won quite a few penalties this season. So, um, yeah, Gordon has been brilliant. He really has. In terms of Nottingham Forest, I mean, it's got to go to Gibbs White, I guess, doesn't it? I went for Murillo, the centre-back. Mm. I really like him. I think 21 years of age. It surprised me when I looked, down, looked him up and realised how young he was, because he plays like he's... Uh, you know, in his early, um, in his late uh, 20s, so his confidence, his strength, his um, kind of assertiveness. And he seems to be determined to win the ball back at every possible moment. He's such an exciting defender. He's one of those defenders that you enjoy watching, which is a rare thing because he's, he's not scared to dribble with the ball out the back. He's not scared to take a shot from 30 yards. He's got bags of ability as well. He's got a powerful shot on his left foot, but he's also a brilliant defender. He's very, very aggressive. And I think... Um, he could fly potentially in a better team. I think he's been really good for not Nottingham Forest on a quite consistent basis. Um, he reminds me a bit of Romero mm. a little bit um, in terms of how aggressive he is. Sometimes you just find him in the striker position. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. Marilla has been brilliant. But I'm looking at players like Morgan Gibbs-White. I feel like he's been the glue to their attacking uh, setup this season. I think he's been central to that. Um, but special mention, I mean, Callum Hudson-Odoi. No one wanted to give him a chance after, you know, he's been on loan here and there in Germany, couldn't get into the Chelsea team after, you know, he was the best product coming out of Cobham at that time. Um, he's got seven goals this season, one assist, but he has been very inconsistent throughout the season, so I wouldn't give it to him. And also Anthony Alanga this season, who I think had a brilliant season with five goals, eight assists. But I am just going to side with Morgan Gibbs-White just because I feel like he has been fairly consistent throughout the season. Yeah, fair enough. Um, who do we have next? Next is Sheffield United. <laughs> One of the worst Premier League sides we've seen in recent years. Um, I mean, who would you go for? It's Ben Berenton Diaz, six I goals, mean, one been, assist. He's actually been pretty good since yeah. January, to be fair. He's come in and done quite well. The one I gave it to was Gustavo Harma. I think he's actually been um, a shining light for them, I think, in central midfield. Even in games where they've... Um, you know, been second best and been well off it. He's actually maintained some sort of standards uh, for, for Sheffield United. I think he's actually been pretty decent, actually. I've been quite impressed with him with uh, some of his cultured play. And also his numbers are decent. Four goals, seven assists for a, a struggling Sheffield United side is not to be stiffed at. And I think by and large, when they've been good, he's been the one um, kind of set central to that. And he's got some big goals for them this season. Uh, even get some good teams. So I went for him. In terms of Tottenham now, mm. um, very strange season for Tottenham because it started very well. It's kind of been progressively um, coming to a head now with uh, losing four games in a row. But with the amount of goals that we've conceded, it's weird to say, but our two best players, well, I would say three in terms of Van de Ven, Romero and Human Son. Human Son has been pretty consistent throughout the season, maybe a little dip here at the end. I'd probably go for Kim Winson just because of he's been the captain. He stood up for the team for the majority of the season. The goal contributions speak for itself. Um, what is it? 17 goals, nine assists. So without his goal, without his goal contributions this season, where will Spurs be? But I do want to say Mickey van der Ven and Kuti Romero have been brilliant this season. I just feel like they've been let down by the kind of midfield, how easy it is to get out of defence. But can you really hand on heart say these uh, two defenders have been player of the season with the amount of goals we've conceded this season? I think they have been our best players, to be honest, um, in terms of consistency when they've been on the pitch, apart from maybe the Newcastle game. I can't think of a bad game either of them have had too many times this season. Obviously, Romero had that Chelsea game where he... Uh, was all over the place but I think by and large they've both been super consistent and it's been kind of the way we play which is why we can see the goals not necessarily how they play um, per se and I think a lot of the time it comes the attacks come down the uh, sides rather than straight down the middle so I did give it to Romero only because I felt like his consistency um, is up there with um, the best players we've had this season and I think um, how he's performed on the ball as well uh, and how he's led from the back has been great. But, you know, on reflection, I don't know if I can look past on just because we're so reliant on him on the for on the forward line. Without him, I don't know where we would be this season. In but, I don't think we'd, uh, we'd be in a... Um, 
I think we would miss the absence of Son more than we'd miss Van de Ven and Romero. Well, you say that, but I mean, where would we be without those Van de Ven recovery runs this season? You know, we've conceded a lot of goals, mm. but we would have pr probably conceded a hell of a lot more goals if Van de Ven wasn't there. Yeah, but look at the forward players we've had. Who's going to score goals mm. if we're not if it wasn't for Son? And that's the hardest thing to do. As much as I love or appreciate Van de Ven, um, you know, when he was out, obviously we struggled, but. We, we're still conceding similar amount of goals with him back in the team, but in terms of scoring, without Son, I think it's I think it's a lot more of a struggle without Son than without those two. Yeah, it's a fair point. So I'm going to give it to Sonny. West Ham up next. Um, a couple of standout performances. Obviously, Jared Bowen, 16 goals, six assists this season. He's been brilliant. Um, but I actually think I'm going to give it to Lucas Paqueta. I think Paqueta has has uh, really stepped it up a notch this season. He got linked to Man City last summer, nearly moved there, and then there was this whole betting scandal thing, and he didn't get his move. But he hasn't let it phase him, and I think he's been so central uh, to West Ham this season and um, a key, key performer for them. Uh, I gave it to Bowen. Um, I think, obviously, Kudus also a good shout. Really good first season for him. Kudus kind of tailed off, though, didn't he? He has tailed off a bit um, la last few weeks. But I think, by and large, it's been a pretty positive first season for him. He showed what he's capable of doing in the Premier League. Uh, but Bowen has been the one who's obviously been the main man for them. Really a return to form again because he had a pretty poor fifth season last season. But um, And there were question marks whether he was ever going to return to there. But I've given it to uh, I've given it to him. In terms of Pakitar... I thought it was brilliant first half of the season, but I think since the turn of the year, there's been a sharp decline and I've been really disappointed with him. I wonder if this move is getting to him in terms of getting ready for next season, getting ready to move on, because I feel like he's been a bit anonymous last last few months of the season and I've been a bit disappointed in him. The thing is with Lucas Paqueta, there was a period where he was out and West Ham just could not score a goal for love nor money. Mm. And I feel like as soon as he came back into the team, he was like that glue to the attack Kuda started scoring again. Bowen started scoring again. And I just feel like without Pekatar in this team, West Ham are a bit toothless. Mm, I agree. He's a, he's a big player for them. He is very, very important. But I've just given it to Bowen. I think his goals have been crucial. And uh, he's, been, he's been the guy that um, has got them where they are this season. And last but not least, we are going to look at Wolves. Um, interesting. I mean, you would give it to Pedro Neto just because of how important he is to the team. But... Nine, he only played 19 games this season. Huang Hee Chan has been absolutely brilliant for them. 12 goals, three assists. Jao Gomez has really impressed me in the middle of the park as well. Um, even players like Bellegarde have really impressed me for Wolves. But I think I'm just going to give it to Huang Hee Chan, you know. I'm going to give it to Huang. I've given it to uh, Matthias Cunha. Mm, Matthias Cunha yeah. has been, I thought, uh, a really brilliant season for him. I think he's really added what people thought... Um, what his biggest problem was because I thought he's always been a good player who's such a threat driving at you dribbling ability um, he's always a handful but he always he, uh, frustrated you because of his lack of end product but I think he's really added that this season Gary O'Neill's really brought that out of him and now he's turned into a really effective forward and a real a player who maybe could be on to better things if he carries on on this trajectory with his talent um, obviously when he was at Atletico Madrid you know, he was he was a good player, but there's a reason why they let him go because they didn't feel like he was ever going to fulfil his potential. But he seems like he's starting to do it this season at Wolves. 12 goals, 7 assists, um, consistent form whenever he's been available for them as well. Sometimes leads the line by himself and is still um, an absolute handful for defences to deal with, even just by himself. Um, such a strong runner as well. I've been so impressed with him, so I gave it to Cunha. It's their relationship, though, both of them, Huang and Cunha together. I think, which has really um, put Wolves in good stead this season. Another player as well, actually, uh, who's really impressed me of late is Eight Nuri. Mm. Uh, the way he can just bomb up the pitch, no one seems to be able to get the ball off him. He's quick as well. And I think Eight Nuri can get a, um, a move to a big club as well. I, I really believe that. And Spurs should probably look at him. But uh, yeah, those are players of the season this year. Let us know in the comments section, do you agree with them or not? But put your player of the season for each and every club in the comments section below. Like, subscribe and comment and we'll see you next time.